All right, so you just left off on the video where I give you the do's and don'ts <coughs> of verifying identities, and now we're going to be working on some of those. Okay, so let's factor and simplify this guy. Sine squared plus sine squared times tangent squared. All right, that looks kind of messy, so let's go ahead and try x squared plus x squared y squared first. All right, so if I factor this out, I know that I have this guy in common with both. So I can factor that out, and I get 1 plus y squared. Now in algebra, that's as far as I can go. With this guy, I have the sine squared and the sine squared in common. Okay, so I can pull that out, and I get sine squared theta times 1 plus tan squared theta. Now, if you look at your identity sheet, you should see that 1 plus tan squared theta is equal to secant squared theta. Okay, So that identity is 1 plus tan squared theta equals secant squared theta. All right, so then I would get sine squared theta times this guy, just turns into this guy. We're just substituting that in, secant squared theta. Now if you get stuck here, remember that you can just go ahead and turn this into uh, sine and cosine. So we'll go ahead and turn this one into cosine since this one's already sine. And we'll get sine squared theta times 1 over cosine squared theta, which equals sine squared theta over cosine squared theta, which is a quotient identity. That equals tan squared theta. And this is as much as we can do with it, so we are done. Okay. So go ahead and look at this one. Add and simplify 1 over minus cosine plus 1 over 1 plus cosine. So go ahead, pause the video, and try this on your own. And then I will do it together. We will do it. Okay, so if this was instead, say, 1 over 1 minus x plus 1 over 1 plus x, what we would do is that we'd find a common denominator and multiply this side by 1 minus x over 1 minus x, and this side by 1 plus x over 1 plus x. Okay, and what that would give us would be 1 minus x plus 1, oops, that's a plus, 1 plus x plus 1 minus x over 1 plus x times 1 minus x. Okay, and we've seen in other videos that this is the same as 1 minus x squared. So then this x and this x would go away. All right, 1 plus 1 is 2, so that'd be 2 over, and this is just 1 minus Oops, 1 minus x squared. Okay, so let's do the same thing for this guy. All right, so you might see that we just substituted the x in for cosine, and then similarly you could just push that cosine in there, but let's go ahead and do this one the long way. Okay, so that would be 1 plus cosine theta over 1 plus cosine theta times 1 over 1 minus cosine theta plus 1 minus cosine theta over 1 minus cosine theta times 1 over 1 plus cosine theta. Oi, that's a lot of writing. Okay, so if we work all this out, we get that that's going to be 1 plus cosine theta minus 1 plus 1 minus cosine theta all over 1 plus cosine theta times 1 minus cosine theta. Okay? Remember, plus cosine and minus cosine, those guys cancel out. We get 1 plus 1, which is 2 over. And this guy, we've seen in other videos, behaves exactly like this guy, so we're going to get 1 minus cosine squared theta. 
So now that I added them together, now I need to simplify. So I know that 1 minus cosine squared theta from the Pythagorean identity is going to give me sine squared theta. All right, now this might look like it's in a pretty simple form, but I would like it if you would rewrite that sine squared theta as a cosecant. So then that would become 2 times cosecant squared theta. And this would be your answer. If you're confused on how I got that cosecant squared, we can rewrite 2 over sine squared theta as 2 divided by 1 over cosecant squared theta using that reciprocal identity. And then remember, dividing is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So that would become then 2 times cosecant squared theta. And I got the same answer doing it both ways. All right, let's move on to another example. So we're asked to multiply and simplify cosecant times tangent. <sighs> oh boy. All right, so I don't see any ones, so I'm probably not going to be using the Pythagorean identity. I'm going to go ahead and rewrite them in terms of sine and cosine. So this cosecant guy, that's going to turn into 1 over sine theta. Tangent, he's going to turn into sine theta over cosine theta. Okay. Now I see that I can cross out those signs because we're multiplying. And that gives me 1 over cosine theta. Now again, that might look pretty simple, but let's go ahead and turn that into secant using reciprocal identity. Okay, and that would be our answer. Great, now let's verify this identity here. All right, finally getting into some verifying. Okay, so remember what I said is that you're not going to work both sides. So what we're going to do is we're going to cover up the easier side and work with the harder side and start performing the operation. Okay, so let's work with this guy. So I'm gonna rewrite him. He's gonna be tan squared theta plus one over secant theta. Okay, now I know that tan squared theta plus one, now that I see that, a one and a square reminds me of Pythagorean identities. So if I look at my sheet of identities under the Pythagorean, I see that that equals secant squared theta over secant theta. Okay, and then I can cancel out one of these secants because that's the same as just writing secant theta times secant theta like this. So I can cancel those out. And then what I get is just secant theta, which is what I wanted in the first place. Great. There's more than one way to do these again. Okay, so if you did it a different way and you got the same answer, that's great. All right. Okay, so now let's verify that secant squared theta minus 1 over secant squared theta equals sine squared. All right, so again, I'm going to cover up the easy side and work on the hard side. So I see a secant squared, and I see a 1. So I see a square and I see a 1, so that reminds me of Pythagorean identities again. So I know that 1 plus tan squared theta equals secant squared theta. So if I minus 1 from both sides, then I get that tan squared theta equals secant squared theta minus 1. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and substitute this tan in for this expression up here. Okay, so that will give me tan squared theta divided by secant squared theta. Okay, well now I'm kind of stuck 
So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to change them into sines and cosines. So I know that tan squared is the same as sine squared theta over cosine squared theta divided by, and I know that secant is the same as 1 over cosine squared. Right, now what I can do is I can just flip this guy upside down and multiply. So then I get sine squared theta over cosine squared theta times, so instead of dividing, I'm going to flip this guy upside down and multiply, times cosine squared theta. Now I can cancel these out, and I get sine squared theta, which is what I wanted in the first place. So we are good. Actually, before I move on to the next one, let's try doing this one a different way. <coughs> so another way we could have written that one is that we could have broken this fraction apart. And what I mean by that is that we can rewrite that as secant squared theta over secant squared theta minus 1 over secant squared theta. This is just a common rule that we can do with fractions. So if I had a plus c over b, I could rewrite that as a over b plus c over b. Okay. So if I rewrite it like this, then this becomes 1, and 1 over secant squared theta, well by the reciprocal identities I know that that equals cosine squared theta, and by the Pythagorean identity, if I subtract cosine squared theta from both sides, I get that that equals sine squared theta. So see, there's multiple ways of doing these. All right, so let's look at this nasty guy here. Ooh, don't like this. So we need to verify that this big guy over here equals this little guy. Okay. So like I've been saying, what we're going to do is we're going to cover up the easier side. We're only going to work with the hard side. Okay, so you might look at this. You might get a little intimidated, which is totally normal. I'm a little intimidated looking at it, and I wrote it. Let's go ahead and let's put x's in where we see signs and see if that's going to give us any indication of where to go. So we're going to do 2x squared plus 3x minus 2 over x plus 2. That equals x. 2x minus 1. Okay. So now that I rewrote it with x's, what I think I'm going to want to do is I think I'm going to want to factor the top out. So I can factor the top out as 2x minus 1 times x plus 2 right, divided by x plus 2. All right, so if you're not sure if you factored the top out properly, <coughs> what you can do is that you can FOIL it and make sure. Okay, So let's do that over here real quick. So 2x times x is going to give us 2x squared. 2x times 2 is going to give us 4x. Negative 1 times x is going to give us minus x. And negative 1 times 2 is going to give us minus 2. Right? These guys combine and we get 2x squared plus 3x minus 2. Which is good because that's what we wanted. Okay. There's some neat videos and um, chapters in your book are on refreshers of factoring. I suggest you guys look those up, they're pretty useful. Okay, so now that I have it in this form, because we're subtracting on top, I can cancel these guys out, and that gives me 2x minus 1, which is perfect because that's what I wanted. Okay, so let's go ahead and try that with this one. I'm going to get a new piece of paper. So we can factor out 2 sine squared theta plus 3 sine theta minus 2 over sine theta plus 2. And we want to show that that equals 2 sine theta minus 1. 
So what we can do is we can factor this out just like we factored out that x. So that's going to be 2 sine theta minus 1 times sine theta plus 2 all over sine theta plus 2. Remember, we covered up this side, so we're only going to be working with this side when we're verifying. Okay, so because we're multiplying, again, you can cancel these out. And we get that 2 sine theta minus 1. Which is perfect because that's what we wanted. So we're good to go. Alright, that's all the examples I have for you right now. We'll be moving on to another 7.2 video in just a second.